executive cars. No one does them as well as the Germans. But which German firm does them best? Mercedes, BMW or Audi? To find out, I'm going to see how the new Mercedes E-Class compares to the BMW 5 Series and the Audi A6. So, three desirable German cars and some less desirable British weather. I'll critique their designs. I just don't think I'm worthy. I, I feel like I should really be wearing a suit. Inspect their cabins. But if that offends your eyes, you can just press a button and make it go away. Test what they're like to drive. This is the car which will get you to that board meeting first. And see how practical they are. Two's company and three is actually a clothes company. But first, let's look at the costs. The BMW 5 Series starts from £31,115, the Audi A6 £32,995 and the all-new Mercedes E-Class £35,935. So, does it really warrant the extra money? Well, it certainly looks the most expensive, I think, you know. Like all recent Mercedes designs, it's got that effortless elegance to it and actually, I, I just don't think I'm worthy. I, I feel like I should really be wearing a suit. It looks very similar to the S-Class, and that's a compliment, by the way. And while there are plenty of styling accents, especially in AMG line trim, they're all tastefully done. The Audi A6 is another car which looks like its bigger brother, the A8. But next to the swooping and sculptured E-Class, it's, dare I say it, a little bit dull. This black edition car doesn't even have a shiny grille. I get stuff like larger alloy wheels and sporty bits of trim, but it's still the most anonymous looking of the three cars, ideal for people who want to go. Unnoticed. Actually, if you go around like you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. In comparison, the BMW 5 Series M Sport is far more distinctive. Also, it's less like a carbon copy of the other cars in BMW's range. The design, it's, it's really stood the test of time. You wouldn't think, looking at the car, that it's actually due for replacement pretty soon because it just doesn't look its age at all on the outside. It's starting to look a tad dated inside, though. Yes, quality is strong, but that big squidgy dash is, well, a bit passe. The iDrive infotainment is hard to fault though, the screen of the upgraded Navi is crisp and the whole system is just the easiest to operate out of all three cars. The Audi system is almost as good to use and you can get it with Google Maps for the satellite navigation and the only problem is the screen's definition is a little bit low resolution but if that offends your eyes you can just press a button and make it go away. You're then left with Audi's high quality cabin. It seems more modern than the BMWs. It's just a shame about the fiddly climate control buttons. On a positive note, you can get a colour screen for full Navi mapping between the instrument dials, if you like. But if you want the best digital driver's display, then it's the one of this new Mercedes E-Class, because this optional system is just so bright, it's so crisp, and the graphics are lovely. And you can even change the display if you want to between three different options. There's another one there. Now, the actual system itself is easier to use before than the other systems in Mercedes, but on the whole, I don't think their command is quite as intuitive as BMW's iDrive. And on the whole, the E-Class has the nicest cabin here. Like the outside, the inside is less like the smaller C-Class, but more in keeping with the bigger and more expensive S-Class. It's just a shame that you can find a few bits of cheap plastic in the cabin. For instance, look at this nasty air vents around. It's all scratchy and tacky. I mean, what were you thinking, Mercedes? It's just insane. I know to blame the blooming penny pinching accountants. Still, overall, this is the best car in the back seats because, well, two's company and three is actually a close company. That's, that's a joke for the accountants, by the way. Yeah, look it up on Google. The Mercedes offers good head and legroom, and the low middle seat, wide body, and big footwells means it's the least uncomfortable for carrying three. It's the easiest car to fit a baby seat in too, thanks to the accessible anchor points and wide rear doors. The boot is the biggest here too, at 540 litres. However, the slightly awkward shaped opening does hamper loading, while you have to pay extra for split folding rear seats. Still, in-car cubby spaces are the best of the bunch. The BMW doesn't have particularly good in-cabin storage for a car of this size. There's definitely less places for all your bits and pieces. For instance, the rear door winds are quite small, so is the space under the armrest. Fitting a baby seat base is tricky as the Isofix fittings are hard to locate. There, there's plenty of room to manoeuvre as the back is the most spacious here, with a touch more headroom than the other two cars. However, the huge transmission tunnel and raised middle seat mean it's not as good for three in the back as the Merc. Also, with a 520 litre capacity, the boot is the smallest and it's an even shape further restricts what you can fit in. So does the fact our test car didn't have the £350 optional folding rear seats. 
blooming misers. Unlike the other two brands, Audi doesn't have the audacity to charge you for fold-down rear seats, which, well, it's good of them. Also, while the A6's boot is a smidge smaller than the Mercedes at 530 litres, its wider opening and squarer shape means you can actually squeeze more into it. But while fitting a baby seat is easy and space in the back acceptable, it's just not quite as comfy for rear passengers as the other two cars. Also, could be spaces can't quite match those in the E-Class, which on the whole is the most practical car of the three. But can the Audi take the lead where it matters most? On the road. So you can only get one petrol engine with the Audi A6, and that's a thirsty V8 in the rather rapid S6, but that vehicle's a little bit niche. Thankfully, there's plenty of diesels, and they are all quality. The one in this car is a two-litre four-cylinder Ultra with 190 horsepower, which Audi says can go from 0 to 62 miles an hour in just over eight seconds, yet should return around 65 miles per gallon. Though, according to this trick computer, I'm only getting 45 miles per gallon. So as standard, you have a manual gearbox on the car, and it's all right, it's not the best, but it's not too bad to use, nice and easy shift on it. I suggest you might want to get an auto though, because it just suits the car better, though the auto that you get with this engine can feel a little bit jerky when you do slow manoeuvres. On the whole though, this is a very nice car to drive. So it feels comfortable as long as you don't have the sporty suspension setups or the big wheels, then the ride can be a bit jarring. So don't do that, deselect those if you're buying one of these cars. Another thing that you notice is that you get a little bit of tyre roll from those tyres, but other than that, it's quite a quiet car to travel in and it handles all right. So this is actually front wheel drive, this car, but most people won't notice it. However, there'll be those people who think, really, an executive car shouldn't be front wheel drive. And if you're one of those people, just get the grippy Quattro all wheel drive model. Thing is though, with this A6, while it, while it is a nice drive, it doesn't actually do anything particularly special. And that's where the BMW comes in. But how you spec the car actually matters more than with the other two. Now, if you buy this car and don't fit the optional adaptive suspension, it just doesn't drive as well as it could do. But with it, it's both comfortable and fun. In fact, this is the car which will get you to that board meeting first because it just has the most sporty drive. It's great. It's a great blend of fun, performance and handling and of course comfort. Now if you like petrol power, there's plenty of choice with the 5 Series, more so than with the Audi. And the diesels are both powerful and economical, though they don't seem quite as smooth as those in the A6. For instance, this one is the 3 litre, it's a 6 cylinder, so it's actually smoother than the 4 cylinder in the 520D that you can get with this car. And the economy is alright, you know, they claim that this thing will do around 54 miles per gallon and I'm averaging 30, well, 36, which it isn't so good, but it's got so much performance. It really makes this car, when you put your foot down, great fun to drive. Now one thing, this six cylinder engine does come with an automatic gearbox as standard. It's an eight speed and it's absolutely brilliant. It's fast when you want it to be. It's smooth when you're just cruising around. And I think it's the best automatic in the business. And you should definitely get this engine if you get in the 520D, even though it's not standard because, well, BMW's manuals, they're just not that nice. The Mercedes, however, comes with an automatic gearbox as standard on all models. And that's part of the reason for its higher price. And that sums up this car's approach. Unlike the other two, there is only one thing on the E-Class's agenda, and that is comfort, and it fulfills its brief very, very well. So this car, it's got the optional air suspension, and the ride, well, it's in a different league compared to its rivals. You really do just feel like you're, you're floating up the road, and it helps that this car is very, very quiet inside, really good sound insulation, no wind noise at all, just a bit of tyre roar and you just, you just cruise about in this zen-like state of relaxation. <laughs> it helps that this, this new E-Class, it has a new two-litre diesel engine. It's a lot quieter than the old 2.1 of the old E-Class, yet performance is still good. You've almost got 200 horsepower, 0 to 60 in over seven seconds. Mercedes says it will return 72 miles per gallon. I'll look down at the trick computer. I'm getting 55 out of this big car in the real world. That's really impressive. Now I know the, the up and coming, you know, thrusting young executive may prefer something a little bit more sporty through the corners, but really, the more established board member with nothing to prove, 
is just going to appreciate this new E-Class's unrivaled luxury. So, where does that leave us? Well, the Audi is a great all-rounder. The BMW is the most fun to drive. But it's the new Mercedes E-Class with its unrivaled blend of luxury and comfort that just feels the most special. And that's why it wins this test. If you click over there, you can watch in-depth individual video reviews of each of the cars in this test. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Now, did you know that the E-Class in this video is actually the most expensive at 51,000 pounds? That's because it had 13 grand's worth of options fitted to it.